الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق توقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد صبر this word, I'm sure all of us over here have heard many, many, many times over the course of their lifetimes. Sabr, a word that we've grown up hearing our parents tell us that this is a very virtuous characteristic that all of us need to inculcate, all of us need to practice in our lives. But how many of us have truly taken the time out and understood what this concept means in our religion? How many of us have really looked up, opened the book of Allah in, in an effort to understand what Allah Azza wa Jal has told us about this idea or this concept of sabr? So inshaAllah ta'ala in the brief time that we have together, I would like to refresh my own memory, my own understanding and all of us over here, inshallah, that we refresh our own understanding of this concept of sabr. What is sabr? What does Allah Azza wa Jal say about sabr? What does His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have to say regarding this concept? Now, let us realize that sabr is commonly translated as patience. But do we know that patience is but a fraction of this concept called sabr? Patience, think about sabr like a cake. And sabr is a cake and patience is but a small slice of this cake. This is what patience is. So what is sabr? And the scholars of the language, they mention that sabr means endurance. Sabr means forbearance. Sabr means that a person has the attitude of having or withstanding stress. Sabr means to be patient, yes. Like I said, patience is but one fraction of what sabr is. So let us see what Allah Azzawajal says in the Quran about this. If you open to the 103rd surah of the Quran, a surah that all of us have memorized. In surah 103, surah Asr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying, Wal Asr. Inna al insana la fi khus. Allah Azza wa Jal says, and He takes an oath by time. Allah takes an oath by time and says that no, have no doubt that mankind is in a state of loss, in a state of manifest loss. So Allah Azza wa Jal is saying that all of you, all of you are losers. But then it doesn't stop there. Allah then defines that what or who are the people who will be taken out of this category of losers. Allah Azza wa continues in the third verse. Allah says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ This concept of sabr. 
Allah Azzawajal says, and Allah is swearing by time. Allah is taking an oath. So Allah is telling me and you, Allah is teaching me and you that have no doubt about this, that all of mankind are in a state of loss. You think you have a very huge bank balance? You think you have a very fancy car, a beautiful house, your business, everything is running well, so this means you are prosperous? Allah says there are four characteristics that you and I must have so that we are not from the losers. Number one, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Number one, that we have faith, that we have Iman. Iman in Allah Azza wa Jal. Iman in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that we are Muslims, we believe in this religion of Islam. آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And that you do good deeds. That you do good deeds. And it's very interesting that in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal has paired Iman, having faith, with doing good deeds. In over 70 places in the Quran, Allah says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ So if a person says that, oh, I believe, and that's enough, then this is not a Muslim doctrine. This is not the belief of Muslims. That you just think that, oh, I believe, and you don't do anything after that. Islam is an action-based religion. You have Iman? Well, show that by praying five times a day. Show that by paying the zakah. Show that by doing the five pillars of Islam. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Then this does not end it there. The list of being from the successful ones does not end there. The third condition is إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ And that you help one another. You work towards the haqq, the truth, the truth of Tawheed, the truth of Islam. You stand up for the truth even in your civic lives, even in society that you live in. You stand up for justice. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ And you stand up for sabr. For sabr. So a person might have three qualities, but he doesn't have this fourth quality, he is still from the losers. This is what Surah Asr is teaching me and you. You must have all of these four qualities. And that is what we began this khutbah by. Sabr. Is sabr merely patience? That's something we just call patience? No. Sabr contains within it many, many characteristics. So let us understand what this sabr is all about. And we'll relate it back to this last verse of Surah Asr, the third verse of Surah Asr. Our scholars, they mentioned that there are three major types of sabr. The first type is that a person has endurance, perseverance, meaning sabr with the commandments of Allah. So a person knows that I have to pray five times a day. And waking up for Fajr, especially in these winter months, when the temperature outside with the wind chill is minus 15, minus 20 degrees. And you are waking up at that time, leaving the warmth of your comforter, of your bed, of your room. And then you could think, oh, let me just do tayammum. I wish tayammum was possible. I'll just get some dust and make tayammum. You have to go to your faucet and do your wudu, and then you pray. This takes sabr, this takes endurance. That you endure, you persevere in the worship of Allah. So a lot of times we think sabr is when a calamity strikes. This is what sabr is. But sabr is also in worshiping Allah, in carrying out the commandments of Allah. So this takes sabr. A person who is involved in business, and he knows that there are many ways in which I can quadruple, I can make my profit a hundredfold. But he knows this path that I will take is not the path with which Allah will be happy. It's not the path with which Allah will be pleased with me. So it takes dignity of a Muslim. It takes iman of a Muslim. It takes sabr for you to deny these other opportunities that you have of making a lot of profit. You say, no, this path is not going to get me the happiness, the pleasure of Allah. It will rather get me the wrath of Allah. So the person leaves that, that particular business transaction that he was thinking of doing. It takes sabr to do this. So the first type of sabr is in order to do, to carry out the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second type of sabr is 
to restrain oneself from the prohibitions of Allah to restrain, and yes, this is also from the meanings of sabr, to restrain yourself, that you know that Allah has said, do not consume alcohol. So a young man may be thinking, oh, I'm going to college, my parents are not with me, all my classmates, they're involved in this, a little bit of alcohol, it's okay, it's fine. But you restrain yourself. And in one of the khutbas, we talked about shamelessness and how obscenity has been proliferated in society. That it takes sabr, that your eyes and your body and your mind wants to do certain things, but you restrain yourself, you stop yourself from doing this. This requires sabr. And now I'd like us to direct our attention to a different segment of our lives. And this segment has to do with sabr, and that is why I'm bringing your attention to this. That how is our interaction with the people whom we deal with. So starting with the family, family interactions. So parent-children relationship. How is it that as parents we deal with our children? And I'm not going to mention the pros and cons of certain upbringings with children and whatnot, no. But when you are dealing whatever mode of tarbiyah you're doing with your children, whenever you're dealing with them, are you the disciplining that you do, is it merely a venting out of your anger? Or are you doing it as a genuine desire for tarbiyah for your children? You need to have sabr with that. Sometimes people say, oh, I don't know what happened in a fit of rage, I did this. Well, your fit of rage, know that Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he mentioned in a beautiful hadith, that I served the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam for 10 years. And in these 10 years, the Prophet ﷺ never said, Oh Anas, why did you do this? Oh Anas, why didn't you do this? SubhanAllah. Now, of course, we see that Anas anhu was also a person of high moral character. For who is he serving? None other than the Prophet ﷺ. So he himself did his due diligence that he, he behaved with the Prophet ﷺ the way Islam mandates. He did not give the Prophet ﷺ a chance to complain. And that is why I would direct now to my talk to the young ones in the crowd. That how is it that your interaction is with your parents? Do you reply back to your parents? Once your parents say something to you immediately, you have a sharp tongue, immediately you reply back. And you've all heard the khutbas and the Jumu'ah khutbas and the talks on the rights of the parents. And I will not go through that over here. But saying oof to the parents is not allowed then how is it that the parent says something and you're busy with your PS4 or your Xbox One and you can't just keep the controller away and do the errand that your mother is asking you? It takes sabr for you to listen to your parents. It takes sabr for you to take care of your old parents. Those of us who have parents who are in their old age, you know how they become, how cranky they become. But yet you have sabr. You have this sabr with them. You have this forbearance with them. No, 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 my parents brought me up when I was young. I was little, think about the things that they went through. I will take care of them. I will be towards them in the best way. And then we need to see what kind of interactions we have with people. In the families, amongst spouses, with the in-laws, with the parents. How is our adab? Do we have sabr or not? Because remember, if you do not have sabr, you may have iman, you may be praying five times a day, but yet, what was the fourth condition? You must have this sabr. How is this sabr? Do you have it or you don't? If you don't, then know that you are from the losers. If I don't, then I should know that I am from the losers. Let me look into my life. Let me see how is it that I'm dealing with these things that Islam has told me to. So I come back to the two types of sabr that we've talked about so far. One is in doing the, the fara'il, the things that Allah has commanded us to do, sabr in that. And then the things that Allah has told us to be away from, to have restraint, to have sabr in that as well. And the third type of sabr that the scholars mention is that when a calamity strikes, when a problem happens, what do you do? You accept that and you show sabr. That things did not go according to your plan. You had decided to take a certain route uh, in your business or in your life or in whatever thing that you're doing. But something else came in. You did not plan for it. 
then what do you do? This is Qadr. And this is what our religion of Islam teaches. And Islam is perhaps the only religion that makes it a pillar of faith that you accept the Qadr of Allah, that you accept whatever Allah has decided for you, the good of it and the bad. So a person bought a most beautiful car and he kept it very safe, he kept it very well, but then one day he gets to the car and then he sees a huge dent across the hood of the car. Does he punch the person standing right next to the car? Or does he say, Inna lillahu, inna illi Similarly, a person gets home and then he had told some of his family members to iron his clothes for him and he sees that the clothes has, that the clothes has a big burn on it. What happens in this case? You should have sabr. There will be times like this, and we've all seen these scenarios, dear brothers and sisters, in our lives. We've seen this. You go home, you want to eat food. Sometimes the food is not to the taste that you wanted it. The salt is not there, or the sugar is not there, or something happened. You decided to take a particular type of job with a company. Few months into the job, you realize, man, life is, quote unquote, become a living hell. What do you do when you come across situations like this? This is where sabr comes in. And I'll take it to the next step. We've all seen loss of family, loss of lives, and inshallah ta'ala, we'll discuss about this in the next khutbah, that when a loss happens, it's one of the most difficult things in our lives. But then a person doesn't say, why me? Or doesn't question the qadr of Allah. Rather, he says that indeed, Allah is the best of planners. Allah is the best of planners and remembers, and that person remembers the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, in which he said that amazing is the affair of the believer. Whatever happens to him, he is a winner. You see, in Surah Asr, Allah was telling us who the losers are, except those who have the four characteristics in them. Well, here in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is explaining that further. Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said, Amazing is the affair of the believer, that he is a winner in every situation that comes his way. That when good happens to him, he does not become arrogant and say, This is because of me, this is because of my efforts. Rather, he says, He, pr he praises Allah, he says, Alhamdulillah, all thanks and praises due to Allah. For Allah is the one who gave me this success. Allah is the one who gave me this fame. Allah is the one who allowed me to make so much profit, alhamdulillah. And the Prophet ﷺ continues, when evil, when shawl touches the believer, the true believer, when evil touches him, he is patient. He accepts the qadr of Allah and he says that verily from Allah we come and to him is our return. So therefore the believer is a winner in both situations. He is rewarded when good happens to him and he is rewarded when evil touches him. I ask Allah Azzawajal to make us from those who are from the sabirun, who are from the patient ones. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Kareem. Wa nafa'anyu wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakeem. Innahum ta'ala jawadun kareemun malikun. In the Hamdalilla, Nahmadu, and a stain, and a stop film, when I will be led in Shuruni and Fusina and Sayyid Ali and Marina, may he be there with the Ada Fahu and Muhdad, when you live and intended the Holy Mushida. Allah, who must only Ada Muhammad Wala and Muhammad. كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبعد. A series of verses that occur in سورة بقرة they beautifully summarize the entire khutbah. A series of verses that I encourage myself and all of you over here that we memorize these series of verses. They're very short, just three verses that really summarize this concept of sabr for us. Allah Azza wa says in the second surah of the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, verses 155 to 157, Allah Azza wa says, وَنَقُصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ Allah Azza wa Jal begins these series of verses by saying that know as a statement of fact, know that you will be tested. Now someone might say, why would Allah test me? 
Can I live in peace? Why should Allah test me? Well, you and I are properties of Allah. Just like you own that iPad, just like you own that car, just like you own that computer of yours, just like you own that pencil or pen or the book that you have, that thing is your property. You can do with it as you wish. Similarly, you and I are properties of Allah. We belong to Allah, so therefore Allah can do whatever it is that He wants with us. But what is so beautiful is that Allah, when He puts us through these tests, it's just not for the fun of it. Rather, Allah has prepared amazing rewards in the hereafter for those who pass the tests of Allah. This is the difference. With the things that you and I own in this world, there's nothing, no reward that you will give to that thing that you own, but rather Allah has specially created and specially placed rewards for those who pass this test. So Allah has placed me and you in this world to test us. Who of us will have sabr? Who of us will have this complete faith in Allah? And Allah explains it in these series of verses. 155 begins by saying, Allah says, that verily we shall test you of something of fear and of hunger. Something of fear, anxiety that you may have. You have decided to do something with your life decided to enroll in some kind of university, decided to go into business with some partners, with some brothers, or with your family members, you've decided to do whatever it is, maybe to relocate to another country, whatever it is, you have this anxiety, you have the fear of the unknown. Sometimes this fear goes away, but the fact that you're undergoing this fear, this is a test from Allah. The Prophet ﷺ explained in an authentic hadith that even anxiety that you may have because of some stress that you're going through, it is a removal, a washing away, an erasing, a cancellation of your sins. This is what it is. Allah says that we shall test you of this fear. We shall test you of something of fear and of hunger. Hunger, alhamdulillah, you and I have our refrigerators filled, except for those who need to go to grocery after Jumu'ah. But in general, your Fridge, your refrigerators are filled with food. You don't think about food that you will, that you will bring to your plate uh, or to your table at night. You have this, alhamdulillah. But we've all heard in the news of countries where people are suffering from hunger. And even in our society that's a quote-unquote luxurious society, you see this. You see that there are people who, because of health conditions, they cannot eat. They cannot eat certain types of foods. This is a test for them. Allah says that we shall test you of this hunger, maybe through a drought, maybe through a famine, maybe the, the rain has stopped, maybe the crops are no longer coming, or maybe because of the disease, of the illness that you are suffering from. Allah says this is a test for you. And Allah says, وَنَقُصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ And you will have loss in your money, loss in your wealth. You think that the money that you have, you will not have loss in it? You will always have it and you will keep on increasing? No. Rather, you will have this loss. It's a fact, Allah says, that وَنَقُصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ And in lives, in lives, people who have children that are taken away, people who have parents that are taken away, that accidents happen, that certain things have happened in their lives. And there are many stories like this, and you all know that there was a family that they went and everybody perished in an accident. Or like a person, like a lady became a widow, or people have miscarriages. It's a very difficult thing. Allah says, we shall test you in this. But then look at how Allah did the verse. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And give glad tidings to the patient ones. And again, صَابِرُونَ As I mentioned, صَابِر is just not patience. It has, it's a very encompassing word. That give glad tidings to the patient ones. Those who when they are struck by calamity, verse 156 continues, that when they are struck by any kind of calamity, any kind of problem, that those when they are afflicted by any problem, anything that comes to them, they don't start questioning Allah. They don't start complaining to creation about the Creator because this has become very common. People, a problem that they go through, they'll start complaining about Allah in the most evil way, A'udhu Billah, that Allah, am I not a good Muslim? Am I not praying five times a day? Am I not giving my zakah? Why did Allah do this to me? A'udhu Billah, such evil words. 
that Allah says those who when they are struck by some problem they say verily from Allah we come and to him is our return and then the verses continue verse 157 Allah says and upon such people who when they are afflicted by problems by a catastrophe, they say to Allah we belong and to Him is our return. For these people, for them, Allah has sent His salawat, His blessings, His salutations. Salawat, subhanAllah. The scholars mention that this has all the blessings of Allah within it. That Allah will bless such a person and He will get rahmah. So this is the second thing, you will get the mercy of Allah. You and I have committed so many sins. Aren't we looking for Allah's mercy, Allah's rahmah? You will get this rahmah as well. And the third thing, the third reward, the third trophy that you will get because of saying inna lillah wa inna ilayhi when you are faced by any problem, the third thing that you shall get is Allah will write you down as a person from the guided ones. And is it possible for a guided person to enter Jahannam? No. So may Allah Azza wa Jal make us from those who understand the meaning of Sabr. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us from those who practice these guidances that are found in the Quran, who practice and live Sabr in their lives. Ask Allah that He makes us memorize and understand and implement these verses in our lives. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ibad Allah, Yarhamullah, Inna Allah Ta'ala, Ya'mu Bil Adl, Wal Ihsan, Wal Ita'i, Idil Qurba, Wa Yanha Anil Fahshai, Wal Munkari, Wal Bali, Ya'ibukum La'allakum Tadakkamun. أذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحوا بكرة وعصيلا ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أعطي الصلاة